Good morning, dear friends. What a wonderful and good day it is. Have no fear because God is with you. He will bless you. And today it is my joy to share from God's word. And so let us bring ourselves in full attention and concentrate and listen to what God has to speak to us by which you may live and enjoy living. The passage is taken as my text today is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 6 and 7. 1 Thessalonians, let me read it for you. Chapter 1 verses 6 and 7. It says, you became imitators of us and of the Lord. Now listen, Paul is writing this letter to the believers at Thessalonica. And so he says, in spite of a severe suffering, you welcomed the message with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. This is the passage I have. And um, let me read to you verse 5 also. Uh, no, 4 and 5. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. And this is the whole passage. Now, in verse 5, Paul describes the way the gospel was presented to the Thessalonians. In verses 6 and 7, he gives an equally full description of the way the gospel was received by the Thessalonians. So here we have two things. How uh, the, the, the gospel has come to them and then secondly, how they received the gospel. And Paul was sure that the way the gospel was presented to them was a right choice because of the effect it produced in the Thessalonian believers. The effect was so dramatic and uh, real that they became imitators of both Jesus Christ as well as Apostle Paul. And notice uh, uh, the four or five things here. I will just mention. They welcomed the message and they, uh, they were converted. And secondly, they welcomed in spite of a severe persecution, opposition, and the result was sufferings for the new believers. Number th three, in such a difficult situation, they experienced a joy uh, which could come only from the Holy Spirit. And fourthly, they were transformed to the point of becoming imitators of Paul and Christ as well. And fifthly, their spiritual growth was so rapid and uh, genuine that the, they, they, they became a model to all believers and churches in uh, Macedonia and Achaia. This is marvelous, my friends. Such that the apostles went there, presented them the gospel, and they welcomed it and received it and believed it and they were converted all in very short within few days this is amazing so there are two three things i would like to remind you number one first the gospel came to them 
Now it came to them in word, but the word with power, with the deep conviction. Which power? The power of the Holy Spirit. And secondly, they welcomed the gospel. And when the gospel came so powerfully to them, they gladly welcomed the gospel and their lives were transformed. Here is a heathen city with a heathen people. Now, never acquainted with the, uh, with the name Jesus Christ or gospel before. This is the first time they're hearing. First heard it from Paul and uh, his companions. And they welcomed the gospel. And they believed in it. And were thoroughly and completely converted. From the life of darkness into a life of glorious light. Of eternal life. And you will, here is God's elective purpose at work. And you will notice that the preaching of the gospel by the apostles whom Jesus Christ commissioned to deliver his, uh, his uh, original message and establish uh, his church consisted of four major elements, basic elements. The gospel presentation. Number one, they proclaim the gospel of God. Chapter 2, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8. And then again it says it is the, the gospel of God means the gospel of Christ. Chapter 3 verse 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 2. And the second thing to notice is uh, they preach the gospel in the power of the Holy Spirit not in their own wisdom or power, or in their own power or abilities, but the gospel was presented to the Thessalonians by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what produced such a dramatic, beautiful result. Now read in Acts chapter 1 verses 5 and 8 and also chapter 2 verse 4. You will understand what the Holy Spirit does to a man or woman committed to declaring this good news of his gospel. We don't have to depend on any other power or wisdom. We are given a heavenly empowerment because the gospel itself is a heavenly good news for the entire mankind. And that is the, the, the blessed thing. The power of the Holy Spirit exposed uh, people's sin and convinced them of their need for God's forgiveness. Because it was against God any sin is committed. And this power exposed people's sin and uh, uh, convinced them of their need for forgiveness, God's forgiveness. This power also resulted in the performing of miracles and uh, healing in the ministry, along with the ministry. The message was proclaimed with the deep conviction. That is the third thing. And that means uh, the messen messengers who were certain of their own conviction and the certain of their own faith and the Spirit's power working in them and uh, through them, they were so convinced that they are right because this same message has actually transformed their own lives. So they know it by experience. What a powerful 
message is this good news which is empowered by the Holy Spirit of God himself. And there is a fourth thing that we need to notice. Those who believed the gospel message responded in faith by obeying God's word and putting it into practice in their daily lives. Whatever they learned from the gospel teaching. And the result was these new believers became examples of holiness and that holiness means moral purity spiritual integrity and separation from evil and devotion to God these are the things that constitute the, uh, constitute the holiness of God and they were also sure and they became examples of righteousness. Now righteous, righteousness means a right relationship with God and the power of God's spirit to live right by God's standard. Now my friends, this life that we receive from Jesus Christ when we acknowledge him as our Lord and Savior is not our life, it is his life within us to live. And only the Holy Spirit's power can enable us to live right and live by the standard of God expressed in his written word, the Bible. So the Bible is the example for our standard. God is not changed. His standard is not changed. What worked in the first century works even today. Because the gospel is the same. And God will not lower any standard that he himself has set forth for those who follow him and choose to live righteously for, for God. Well, time will change, people will change, people's ideas may change, but God will not change. He will not change his word and he will not lower his standard either. But what is the problem? The messengers, many messengers can, be, can change. Some of these messengers can be lured into the world by the attractiveness of riches and money and fame and name, etc. And how many champions of the gospel has been now left their faith because of these. But my friends, God is still the same. He does not change. You know, the amazing truth is, we are living in a very changing world. People around us will change. We ourselves may change. People's ideas may change. Their interpretation of scriptures may change. Perhaps as a result, there are hundreds and hundreds of denominations. Each denomination has its own uh, convictions. Many are right. Many are wrong at the same time. In this changing situation, we also live. We also keep changing. And the amazing thing is, this unchanging God and his unchanging gospel is the only means for us to be changed and transformed and to become like Jesus. This is God's plan for you. So believe, acknowledge Christ, go forward and live a holy life for God is with you. He is coming soon, my friends. Let us be ready for his appearance. 
And the Bible says, as we continue to live in righteousness and in holiness and growing in them, when He comes and when we see Him face to face, we shall be like Him. So live to be like Jesus. This is His will for you. God bless you. This is a wonderful day, my friends. Live right and let God be praised and be glorified in you and through you. Amen. This is God's day.